now we're in Photoshop and um, first of all I would like to make a few annotations to um, show you what my thoughts are on this image and uh, what Pear's brief was. So therefore I create a new layer, empty layer and uh, take a bright color and um, a brush that is set to 100 opacity and 100% flow so that I can paint in a few things that we agreed on to be done. First of all, um, I would like to work on the shape of the head. So nudge it in, that's a little more round and pleasing. And um, same goes for this line. I want to straighten a few of these lines and especially here and here just to make it a little more round and more smooth which will enhance uh, the image uh, ever so slightly and this beautiful lady has a slightly big nose and therefore um, we're gonna like shrink it a little bit very gently and um, that should be the liquefied job and um, when it comes to retouching there's a few things that uh, I would like to point out that are um, important in, in my eyes that we are going to tackle. This is uh, especially um, the hair. So there's a lot of cri crisscross and flying hair that don't add to the image. And in this case, uh, it's oh, white. I thought I picked the green one. Uh, usually I don't mark these. I'm doing this by heart, but I just want to uh, point out for you as, as you watch this image, what kind of hair um, I would like to take away so that you get an idea about my thinking process. And uh, it's the single hairs here and the dark hairs and all the hair that goes in a different direction than the uh, overall hair flow. Um, these kind of hair uh, we, we need to see uh, throughout the process. So if we take this out or if we leave it in, just mark it with a question mark. It's these single hairs and these, these ones that we're gonna take out, this black one, this bright white one, these, 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 these. And we're gonna clean up here, I think, just to make it a little more fancy and not too, um, distracting of course we are going to clean up the skin and but you will see in the process that there are a lot of things that we will take care of uh, we will fill in a few uh, eyebrows I think and we were gonna smooth uh, the hairline take out a few more of those. So I think you get an idea. Um, what I will possibly do is that we will clean up and shrink these hairs slightly. And now it's all marked up. Uh, but as I said, uh, I usually don't uh, mark these uh, things. This is just for illustrational purposes to show you uh, the thinking process behind it. All right, uh, let's start with the liquefied job. And uh, from there, we will continue with uh, healing and cloning the parts that I just showed you to um, make uh, a new layer. We will just drag this layer here and call it Lick, Liquify, and uh, jump right in to filter Liquify. 
and we will uh, work on the things that I mentioned. So first of all, we increase the size of the brush. You can do it here, or you can just push uh, control and option and uh, move your pen of your tablet. And then you can nudge it in to make the shape a little more round. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in now to work on the lines that I just mentioned. Just to make it a little smoother and more straight. Again, this is nothing to, to overthink too much. Just go with your own preference, I think, and uh, you should be good to go. can see me change the size of my liquify brush. That is because I uh, want to tackle just the areas that I want to straighten. A lot of these things are personal preference or things by experience. So don't feel obligated to do those. But um, once you have done that for, I don't know, a couple of years, you definitely know what to look for and what you uh, want to take care of in an image. And in many cases, clients do tell you what they want and what uh, they, although sometimes they start telling you what they want when they see what you did. Um, so it's good to ask the right questions in advance when you don't get um, a proper brief. And that is what I encourage you to always ask for when, uh, when it comes to um, speaking about what has to be done in the image. So let's deal with the nose. There are many options and um, one that I happen to like uh, pretty much is this uh, Pucker tool, that's a great name. Uh, so you can increase the size of the brush just right, just to cover the nose and then click once or twice and see what it does. Um, now that I did, I will just hit preview and see that it also changed the eye. So this is possibly not what I want to do. So I'm going to go two steps back and um, do it manually. We can try the move left tool, push left tool, and uh, just use it very gently to work on the nose and maybe push it in a, a notch, a notch, just a notch. Yes. All right. Is there anything more that we need to deal with? Otherwise, we can we can always uh, take this step again. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we see what we changed in the image. And I guess that's a pretty good base to start. All right. So next thing, a new layer. Call it ret retouch and lock it. Uh, locking this layer um, saves a lot of issues <laughs> because if you are working uh, on a new layer and uh, at some point accidentally you move it, have fun finding out where and how it sat in the image. So never do that. Lock it, and you have one uh, issue left. Uh, one uh, issue. Um, 
less issue. That's what I wanted to say uh, in your image. All right, let's uh, let's take a look and let's zoom in to check out uh, the details. First, uh, I'm going to go to my healing brush and um, deal with the most obvious things. To just clean um, bad texture. Sample on a similar area. And take out this hair. So pushing out to sample and then moving through the image. I like this uh, step of the process very much because it's very meditative and you can get uh, used to the image. You see all the uh, all the details that y need to be dealt with, and uh, I I love to get lost in in an image and let it talk to me and let it tell me what it wants. And I'm I'm always jumping back and forth, so um, if if it's uh, more used to to work on a certain area at a time, please do so. This is uh, just my personal way to walk through this kind of image. So I want to take out these little hairs that don't really add to the quality of the image. And uh, since we are working uh, on a on a mag uh, on a magazine image, which is going to be uh, printed in a four size uh, or uh, thirty centimeters, um, then it is not necessary to to deal with every 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 single detail that you would like retouch uh, on a on a key visual for example key visual is uh, a big campaign images that can be used in billboards or uh, just big prints there uh, of course many more details are visible and i'm going to take out one of these brows that goes in the different direction and one of these and this hair that goes over the uh, iris And what, what one thing that I learned uh, when I started out in retouching is that it's always good to work with a really, really, really tiny brush. You have so much more control and uh, you don't need to use force to go and alter the image. And... Uh, it makes you like be more patient and as I said it's a meditative process for me do you like uh, do you like healing and cloning and dodging and burning as much as I do Cause I can do it like forever and get completely lost in an image. There have been times when I was, uh, especially in, in uh, high-end hair images, where you get used to get to know every hair by name. I can, I can only encourage you to try that and to get into it because hair retouching is so much fun. It's also a pain in the ass, but it's a lot of fun once you master it. There's a little dryness here that we can take away. This 
Let it not be there. Oh, and by the way, um, I don't know about you, but I love listening to music or podcasts uh, while I retouch. Uh, it's it's a great way to get uh, knowledge or just some entertainment. And uh, I created a few playlists on uh, Spotify for me to uh, have some good tunes while retouching and. Uh, I made some of those lists public, so if you're interested in finding out what I listen to when I retouch, um, you'll find some links in the description of this video. And uh, right now I am into the 90s skate punk playlist and uh, I'm listening to The Mayfly of Millen Colin. Uh, if you know, you know, right? So I'm a kid of the 80s and uh, 90s skate punk is I don't know, it, it's there for me, you know, all the time. And I love, love 90s skate punk so much. I'm still listening to it probably every day. I'm teaching my son uh, the joy of 90s skate punk and he's also enjoying it. Also, he's like six years old now and he hasn't been in uh, around in this time, but yeah. There's nothing better than a really, really good uh, skate punk tune. But you can convince me that there's something else. I'm open. So these dark hairs, uh, primarily. Uh, never mind if we take out too many of those, we can always draw some more hair in, some maybe nicer falling hair, so that but we get to that a little later. about the face the skin I mean like these darker spots maybe some of those might be molds not sure yet which one I will keep but since we're working on an empty layer, we can always bring them back later if someone misses them. I'm dancing around this one here. <laughs> ah, let's take it away. Okay. Just removing this bad texture and replacing it with better texture. Still working with the healing brush. There's many ways to retouch hair. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of tools, um, but it's it's there's no one right way. It it always depends on uh, how much time and effort you want to put in an image. Um, so again, there's a difference between key visuals and smaller prints and um, you can always uh, go the whole way 
but sometimes, and especially uh, in, in smaller um, resolutions, it doesn't always, or it's not always necessary to, to go through, through all the struggle. Because hair retouching can be a real pain. And we are talking, we're not talking about real pain in this image. There's way more heavy stuff. And um, in all the projects I did for Henkel, for example, uh, for some brands like Schwarzkopf or Sires uh, and others, there is, uh, you won't, you possibly won't believe what is possible and is and is done in, in retouching, but uh, at some point uh, I definitely can show you. Now I'm going to switch to the clone stamp, go to normal mode and uh, maybe 30% opacity and 30% flow to deal with this lip highlight here. Just cover it a bit. So you don't always have to take it out completely, but you can like make it a little more smooth. If you see the before and after, that's that's good. And this also goes for like these darker patches. You can dodge and burn them or you can like clone a little little part of the nose and do whatever gets you to de to your desired result. Switching back to uh, the healing rush, but I'm gonna go to the spot healing rush now, which is a fantastic tool to, if you activate content aware as a type and sample all layers um, and this uh, pen pressure, you can like draw here and it does a fantastic job in the newer version of Photoshop to, it hasn't always been like that, but in the new versions of Photoshop, it's a fantastic tool to retouch hair. Saves you a ton of time and it's very intelligent as you can see. So by with this tool, you can just paint over the hair that you want to take out. By the way, it's Pennywise right now. Got a lot of Pennywise. And when in doubt, zoom out. That's the same as for the finance world. Uh, when you check some chart patterns, when in doubt, zoom out. Uh, you see the full picture and see where we are. Yeah, I think we're on a good way with this one. And you don't always have to take them out completely. Sometimes it just helps to dim them down and don't make them, or just make them less prominent. And again, you have always the chance and the option to draw in uh, some more hair that go in the right direction and guide the viewer's eye. 
in the end it's all about being believable and not a crappy retouch right Maybe we're cleaning this gap here. So I think you get the picture. And now on the tie, let's see. I think it, it, as you can see here, the spot healing brush uh, is doing a really smart job with the pattern. It's a real pain to do that uh, with the clone stamp tool. I think I'm gonna do this one, this tiny one, the blonde one here, manually with uh, the clone stem tool. I'm not sure if uh, the this one's gonna cut it. Well, well, look at that. Just this one, close them. Small brush size. Right. There are a few more of those black ones that I would like to get rid of since I don't really like them. And this one here. Oh, it's bad religion now. I remember a bad religion gig in uh, 98 in Munich, Munich, Germany. Uh, we were we were there with uh, my classmates and we sneaked out of the hostel that we stayed in to see punk rock gig. And uh, that was one of one of those days that has been uh, an unforgettable story going sneaking out and making our way to the venue and somehow making it in and see these amazing bands like no fun at all and uh, black wagon and um, bad religion and satanic surface in one uh, one evening Awesome. Okay. 
if this bores you, I don't know if this if this jobs for you. And then here again, just the, the most prominent ones. Well, in this case, uh, I'm gonna erase it and go for uh, another technique, which is uh, the clone stamp tool with the darken mode. So this is one of those techniques um, that is used for key visuals, I think, pretty much. So if you want to spend more time on one hair, you only clone the bright areas and leave the illusion of everything else staying intact. Let's go up here. There's something that I want to go with the spot hitting brush again. Look at this bright guy here. And then the dark one again. Ooh, there's a few more. And then I think by experience you will see that clients and photographers always say that don't do too much but it's these things that are mandatory and that are making a difference in the end so i love to spend a little extra time on on hair and on uh, on the skin just to make it very natural and but also very clean and just always give it my best because it does make a difference All right. So 
So what do you listen to when you retouch? How about these guys here? I think I'll just take them out to check. And maybe get them back in afterwards. I don't know. No, no, no. No, they can go. Bye. What hair clients many times ask you to do is uh, take out these shiny single hairs um, or sometimes they appear to be, if it's dyed hair, they appear to be gray. So uh, this is always something that you either need to take out or that you need to colorize because this is always uh, of course uh, a product issue if it's a hair product they don't want gray hair no not this two guys here and here we are with these I don't I'm not sure yet so let's see I'm gonna leave it for now but I might take it out later this light one I don't want it. Let's see. Yeah. Looking good. Let's take care of the outline. Just some of those single hairs that maybe don't work that well. See, the harder I push with my pen, uh, the bigger the size of the stroke gets. That's because of the pen pressure. Try that with the mouse. If you wonder how I got used to working with the Wacom tablet, uh, it was in the early beginnings of my career in the creative industry. I was working in a tiny but very excellent uh, graphic design studio. And uh, they had these very old Wacom tablets back in 2002. And um, I was I was pretty amazed by 
the idea of using a computer with a pen. I never did that before. And uh, aside from like uh, like a like a palm, uh, m maybe you remember these palm computers that had a pen. And uh, so I bent the mouse for almost three weeks and I never wanted to touch the mouse anymore. It was such a natural feeling to work with a Wacom tablet. So, um, yeah, it's it was love on the first uh, stroke. <laughs> Since we're not putting this model on a new background, we can like, dim it away, uh, the hair. Uh, later we are going to do, or maybe we do it now, like with low opacity and low flow, we can paint some of the background over. Just to soften it a bit. Let's go to this side. Maybe this dark one here. Nah, I'm gonna leave this for now. I don't know yet. Definitely this one here. Do you know how one can play Spotify songs in uh, your videos or tw uh, live streams? Is it allowed? I guess not, but oh, that would be so great. Look at this one here. Didn't see that before. Here, this guy. Not necessary to keep it. And I guess here. So the chin is not that affected. Here's one of those that uh, Let's try to tackle it with a low opacity. Where is it? There it is. But I don't want to take it out. I just want to dim it, dim it down. Yeah. Maybe also here, use the pink. And here we can put some pink, but was it too much? That's fair, it's fine. Let's get back to the eye. I think we can go here with uh, 
the regular clean brush and a very small brush tip. I think it was one of my first mentors, uh, Robin Preston, an awesome guy from London uh, who kept me under his wings for a couple of a couple of years actually to teach me a lot about retouching. Uh, Robin, if you hear that, thank you for everything. Um, he taught me about the brush can't be small enough for maximum control. dark spots you can also touch and burn them later right I'm going to even out some of these that also have color oh yeah and here see with a small brush you can take these out in a breathe. Only thing we have to go there later to maybe draw in one or two or a couple of hair to make it less obvious. In, um, in Photoshop When I uh, give workshops or insights uh, or, or keynotes uh, on, on retouching, uh, I've been doing that a couple of times uh, with Capture One or uh, Wacom. Um, I like to point out that being a Photoshop professional is like being a ninja. Not only because it sounds cool, but also uh, since um, we as retouchers have done a good job when you don't see trace of us. See how I jumped from the, oops, from the uh, hair, uh, from the skin back to the hair. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, as I told you earlier, I'm jumping through the image and uh, that's not a recommendation, it's it's a preference or personal style. See how I'm taking out those that don't really add to the image. Okay, skin. Forehead, there were a few dark ones on this one coming down. Okay, 
this part definitely needs some new hair at some point but let's make base before that should be okay here's uh, something that I want to take away oh I was cloning in darken mode <laughs> that was a brave move through the skin but okay didn't do any damage sometimes you get away with it thinking about the eyebrows this one goes here. Hmm. Maybe take it out and paint some in. Let's see. Let's go to normal. Or is it should it be the healing brush? Oh yeah, here that is little dry steps. Um, I'm doing slightly more than I would probably usually usually do on a editorial image, just to show you what what steps can be necessary and done. Changing the skin structure here. All right, I think I'm in the zone now. Just eliminating this bigger pores. All right, let's move down here. Remove these temporary flaws. Not the moles, but the pimples and dark spots. Okay. Yeah. Does this one bother us? Nah, that's fine. Okay, so let's see what we did with the retouching. Yeah, I guess that is a step that we can close this part. Oh no, there is a small issue. I think that's a step that we can close the healing and cloning part with and move on to um, dodging and burning. And um, But maybe before that, we can paint a few single hairs we forget that in the end therefore um, I like to create uh, a hairline setup if you wonder what that is um, this is the on-screen menu of my uh, Wacom tablet so you can alter that um, right now there's an um, there's a video in German language on uh, my YouTube channel where you can see me how I set that up, and um, but for now, you can address uh, all sorts of actions and uh, 
adjustment layers and everything to it. So um, I'm having my hairline set up, which creates two, um, s uh, two empty layers and activates uh, a brush that I like to um, use. And this time, uh, in this case, I want to have it for inner hair. And the brush is 100% uh, opacity, 100% flow pen pressure. And, uh, oh, is it? Let's see. I thought it was pen pressure. Does it show me what it is? Well, this button here. And uh, smoothing of 20%. That is very important here since uh, we want to paint a, a few hair, single hairs. See? And uh, just want to mimic the original flow. Maybe one pixel is too small um, since it's pretty bright. Let's take two. And they can go out like that. Don't worry about the hair yet. We will tweak it ever so slightly when we get there. Let's take a little brighter color here. All right, now we go here. Maybe this brighter color and deal with a few gaps. Close some gaps here. Just a bit. Yeah, like that, or here. Just fill it up a bit. Also here. Maybe take a few in this direction. And also here. Okay. All right. So now this hairline looks a bit more clean. And um, one thing we need to do now is to make two copies by pushing Command J two times. Keep one of them. The other two we will merge. Uh, just activate both layers and push uh, Command E. Now they are a little thicker and um, now we will adjust the sharpness. So we will blur them according to the hair. Yeah, that's a little too much. To the surrounding hair, maybe like, like so. Yeah, and now by pushing Command and the layer you and then pushing uh, this little mask button here you create a mask which makes it much more natural and then you can work with the density to bring some of this back so if you look at 
the hair now this is the painted hair yes and now we can uh, apply the layer mask so now we have some new hair which looks pretty believable I think right and of course you can do the same thing on the outside all right so next step would be dodge and burn 